This is lesson 8.3, graphing quadratics of this form, which I'm pointing at right now. You should be on page 432. So in this lesson, you will learn to graph quadratic functions of this form that you see listed here, and also how to find the maximum and minimum values of quadratic functions. Let's talk about how to graph these. You've learned in the previous two lessons that you could simply put these in your calculator to create a table and a graph. This lesson is going to focus more on how can you just look at the function and graph it without the help of your calculator. Here's some key points that we have to identify. First of all, and you might have picked up on this already, the value A, the number in front, will show you if the graph opens up or if it opens down. If this number is positive, the graph has to open up. And if this number is negative, the graph must open down. The y-intercept is C. So whatever number you have here, that's your y-intercept. Remember, the y-intercept is where the graph touches the y-axis. Next, the x-coordinate of the vertex now, the x-coordinate of the vertex, remember the vertex is a point, that middle point on your parabola. This number can be found by taking negative b over 2a. If you use that little equation, you can find the x-coordinate of your vertex. And negative b over 2a will also tell you the axis of symmetry. So this little formula will tell you a couple things. It will tell you where is your vertex located as far as x, and also what is your axis of symmetry. <coughs> so let's see, that, let's see that at work in this example question, everything that I just talked about here. Okay, so let's find the axis of symmetry of this problem. So first of all, to find the axis of symmetry, I can see in this problem that a is 2, b is 8, C is negative 1. Now, I want you to think about a couple things I talked about. I'm going to answer this question A in a minute, but I want to say a couple other things. Does it make sense this parabola must open upward because A is positive? And right there is my y-intercept. The point 0, negative 1 has to be on this graph because that C, this number, is the y-intercept. So without even graphing anything, I already know that this thing opens up, and there is my y-intercept, 0, negative 1. Let's find the axis of symmetry. It's easy. We're going to use, let me erase this out. We're going to use this little formula, negative b over 2a. So I already told you that we know b is 8, c was negative 1. You're going to plug in an 8 for b and you'll plug in 2 for a, and when you plug in 8 for b, 2 for a, you get negative 8 over 4, which is negative 2. The axis of symmetry in this problem is negative 2. So I know on graph paper, if I go two units to the left, there's my axis of symmetry, okay? Which means my vertex has to be at the point negative 2 comma something, right? My vertex would match my axis of symmetry, i got to find out what is that number. Well, it's easy. You know x is negative 2, so take negative 2, and you can see here, wherever you see x, plug in a negative 2, and then solve this. You get negative 9. The vertex would be negative 2 then, negative 9. Okay? With what we just talked about here, why don't you try these? I want you to find the axis of symmetry of each of these, and then the vertex of each of these equations. Stop the video and do that. And I'm back, and here is the axis of symmetry for number one. It's one-third, and then there's your vertex. The axis of symmetry for two was negative three, and then there was the vertex. And for question of three, the axis of symmetry was seven, and there is the vertex. Okay? So if you have any questions about those, make sure you ask about those during class time tomorrow. Now, we can use these ideas that we just learned to graph these. Now, you can put these in your calculator, but if you just use what we did, we can get these almost graphed without our calculator. Just, they want me to graph this, describe the domain and range. So, 
if I find my axis of symmetry first, which you see they're doing here, okay, let me highlight that. They're finding the axis of symmetry first. Don't forget to use that negative sign when you use this. It's negative B over 2A. So we have the opposite of negative 6 over 2 times 3. The axis of symmetry is 1. So if you look at this picture, they drew an axis of symmetry, one unit to the right. Okay, my vertex, go ahead and plug in 1 wherever you see X, and you get 2. So the vertex is 1, 2, so 1 right, 2 up. Do you notice how C is 5? That means we have a y-intercept at 5. And parabola is mirror. So if we have a point one unit left of the mirror, we should have a mirror point one unit right. And you can see, based on those three points, we could draw a parabola. Okay? So we can draw these up almost without even having to use our calculator. I would let you use your calculator, but when I test you, I'd probably ask you questions more regarding finding the axis of symmetry, the vertex, y-intercepts, to know that you understand these things. We have to now answer, what's the domain and range? Well, the domain, this graph will continue going right forever, and it will continue going left forever. So the domain can be anything for x, so the domain is all reals. But look at the range. Let me take a different color pen. The lowest this graph goes is 2, and it just continues to rise from there. So the range would be y greater than or equal to. Okay? Um, just highlighting some of the things we talked about. I would like you to try 4 and 6, but I, I'm, I'm going to have you do something different. I don't want you to graph these because you could just type them in your calculator and graph them. I want you to find the vertex and the y-intercept of each of these, and then I want you just on, on a normal sheet of paper, quickly sketch it and label those points. Go ahead and do that. Okay, I'm back, and for number four, here was the problem. So let's get our axis of symmetry, negative b over 2a. So I'm going to do the opposite of 4 over 2 times 2, which works out to negative 1. So my axis of symmetry is negative 1. Let me label that here. So you can see I did, did a dotted line, 1 left. Now i got to get my vertex. i got to take negative 1 and plug it in wherever I see x. And when you calculate this out, you should be getting negative 1 then, because I'm going to get 2 minus 4 plus 1, negative 1. So there's my vertex, negative 1, so 1 left, 1 down. Now, this is key. My y-intercept is right there. It's c. c is 1. So I can go ahead and I can plot a point at 0, 1. Now, the axis of symmetry is like a mirror. So think, this point is one unit away from the mirror, so there must be another point on this side of the mirror one unit away. Well, one unit left of negative 1 is negative 2, so this is the point negative 2, 1. Let me erase these things out of here real quick, too. Okay, and now I can draw my parabola. Now, you notice this parabola opens up. Look at A. It ought to open up. A is positive. Remember, if A is positive, that means the parabola would open up. Okay? Let's go to the second example. P of X equals negative 5X squared minus 10X minus 2. From what we just talked about, this parabola, when we're all done, look at A. A is negative. This parabola better open down. Okay, let's work this out. Let's get our axis of symmetry, negative b over 2a. That's the opposite of negative 10 over 2 times negative 5. That's 10 over negative 10. That's negative 1. So my axis of symmetry is 1 left. From there, we've got to get our vertex. So wherever I see x, I ought to put in a negative 1 and calculate that statement out. When I do, I get positive 3. So my vertex is 1 left, 3 up. Um, my y-intercept, let me get out my highlighter. My y-intercept is negative 2, which is why I have a point at 0, negative 2. And now I've got to take this point and mirror it over. This point is 1 right of the mirror. I need a point 1 left of the mirror. That would be negative 2, negative 2. And you can see my parabola opening down just like we said. Now, finding the maximum and minimum values on a parabola is easy. 
if you know the vertex, you know the maximum or the minimum. If the graph opens up, it's going to have a minimum value, a low point. If the graph opens down, it's going to have a maximum value or a high point. Okay? So if you know the vertex, you also know the maximum or a minimum. Okay? So I tell you what, let's just go back real quick. For this problem, the one that we just did, my maximum would have been, my max would have been 3. That's the highest point of the graph. In this question, my minimum would have been negative 1. Okay? You can see those. Um, in these questions, the ones that we did here, this would have been my minimum value because that graph opened up. We had a positive for A. Here we had a positive for A. That would be my minimum value. You notice how this graph has a negative for A. This one opened down. That would have been a maximum. So you can look at your vertex and you know the maximum or minimum by just looking at the Y value. So let's fi figure that out for this question. Tell whether the function has a minimum or a maximum value. Well, here's the first issue. Look here. You definitely know this graph opens down. It's going to have a maximum value. We just got to figure it out. So let's do negative b over 2a. You can see they're plugging in negative 20 for 4 for b, negative 4 for a. They found out the axis of symmetry is negative 3. They then took negative 3, and wherever you see x, they plugged that in, and they worked out the statement. You can see their work here. They got 17, so they know the maximum is going to be 17. If you know your parabola opens upward, you're going to have a minimum. Like here they talk about the suspension cables of the Mackinac Bridge. Do you notice how A is positive? That's a positive number, so I know I'm going to have a minimum value, okay, for, uh, I, don't have, I have a minimum because my parabola is going to open like that, as you can see here on the bridge, okay. To find the minimum, I have to know the vertex, so figure out your axis of symmetry, which they're doing here, negative b over 2a, they're plugging in negative 0.37 for b and the decimal uh, here for a. They're rounding it. Negative b over 2a is about 1,888. They're then going to take 1,888 and plug it in wherever you see x. You can see their work here. And they found out that the cable, the y value for the vertex is 203. So the vertex is 1,888,203. There's your minimum. It's 203. Okay? Why don't you quickly find the maximum or minimum of questions 7, 8, and 9? Okay, and we're back. And for number 7, do you notice how A is positive, which means if A is positive, we must have a minimum. So I quickly found my axis of symmetry. It was a half. I took a half. I plugged it in wherever I saw X, and I got 4. So my minimum has to be 4. In question 8, um, do you notice in 8 that we have an A value that's negative, which means I definitely have a maximum value. I use x equals negative b over 2a, and I found my axis of symmetry was 6. And now that I know 6 is my axis of symmetry, I can plug 6 in for x. It gave me 10, and that means my max is 10. And then for the bridge question, number nine, can you see how A is positive? So I have a minimum. I did negative B over 2A. I rounded it a little bit here. I got 14, well, actually, I didn't round this. It was exactly 1,437.5. Um, so 1,437.5, I took that, I plugged it in wherever I saw X, and I worked this out, and I got 176, about. I rounded that. So my minimum is about 176. You can use these techniques then to solve word, word problems, modeling with mathematics. A group of friends is launching water balloons. This function represents the height and feet of the first water balloon t seconds after it's launched. 
The height of the second water balloon t seconds after it's launched is shown in the graph. So here's the second balloon. You can see the second balloon uh, looks like it was just a little bit over 120 feet in the 125 feet, a little over 125 feet in the air. Which water balloon went higher? Well, if I want to find how high this balloon went, I need to find its maximum. Okay, well, we can do that real quick. Um, first of all, this parabola would be opening down, so it has a maximum. I need to use negative B over 2A. I'll plug in 80 for B, and I will plug in negative 16 for A. And when I do that, negative 80 over negative 32, let me put that in my calculator, I get 2.5. So now I can take 2.5 and plug it into the equation. So let me do that real quick. And you can see here I plug that in. And when you plug that in, it looks like I'm getting 105. So my vertex was 2.5 comma 105. So this balloon only went 105 feet in the air. So obviously the second balloon is going definitely higher. That's over 125 feet in the air. I'm going to pause the video here. If you have any questions, make sure you ask in class.